Passengers may resume if they're ready. Mr. Chief Justice, members of the Senate, before I begin, I would like to thank the Chief Justice and the Senators for your temperate listening and your patience last night as we went into the long hours. Truly thank you. The House managers will now undertake to tell you the story of the President's Ukraine scheme. As we tell this story, it is important to note that the facts before us are not in dispute. There are no close calls. The evidence shows that President Trump unlawfully withheld military assistance appropriated by Congress to aid our ally in order to extort that government into helping him with his reelection, then tried to cover it up when he got caught. This is the story of a corrupt government-wide effort that drew in ambassadors, cabinet officials, executive branch agencies, and the office of the president. This effort threatened the security of Ukraine in its military struggle with Russia and compromised our own national security interests because the president cared only about his personal political interests. In the spring of 2019, the people of Ukraine elected a new leader, Volodymyr Zelensky, who campaigned on a platform of rooting out corruption in his country. This pledge was welcomed by the United States and its allies. But the new government also threatened the work of President Trump's chief agent in Ukraine, Rudy Giuliani. As President Zelensky was taking power, Mr. Giuliani was already engaged in an effort to convince Ukrainian officials to announce two sham investigations. The first was an effort to smear former Vice President Joe Biden. The second was designed to undermine the intelligence community's unanimous assessment that Russia interfered in the 2016 election. One obstacle to Mr. Giuliani's work was Ambassador Marie Yovanovitch. A 33-year veteran of the Foreign Service, Ambassador Yovanovitch had partnered with Ukraine to root out the kind of corruption that would have allowed Mr. Giuliani's lies to flourish. In order to complete his mission, Mr. Giuliani first needed Ambassador Yovanovitch out of the way. And so in early 2019, Mr. Giuliani launched a public smear campaign against the ambassador, an effort that involved Mr. Giuliani's allies in Ukraine, the president's allies in the United States, and eventually President Trump himself. Please remember that the object of the president's Ukraine scheme was to obtain a corrupt advantage for his reelection campaign. As we will show, the president went to extraordinary lengths to cheat in the next election. That scheme begins with the attempt to get Ambassador Ivanovich, quote, out of the way, unquote. By all accounts, Ambassador Ivanovich was a highly respected and effective ambassador. Witnesses uniformly praised her 33-year career as a nonpartisan public servant, and told us that she particularly excelled in fighting corruption abroad. President George Bush named her as an ambassador twice, and President Obama nominated her as ambassador to Ukraine, where she represented the United States from 2016 to 2019. Eradicating corruption in Ukraine has been a key policy priority of the U.S. government for years. During the House inquiry, the ambassador explained why implementing this anti-corruption policy was so important. As critical as the war against Russia is, Ukraine's struggling democracy has an equally important challenge, battling the Soviet legacy of corruption, which has pervaded Ukraine's government. Corruption makes Ukraine's leaders ever vulnerable to Russia, and the Ukrainian people understand that. That's why they launched the Revolution of Dignity in 2014, demanding to be a part of Europe, demanding the transformation of the system, demanding to live under the rule of law. Ukrainians wanted the law to apply equally to all people, whether the individual in question is the president or any other citizen. It was a question of fairness, of dignity. 
Here again, there is a coincidence of interests. Corrupt leaders are inherently less trustworthy, while an honest and accountable Ukrainian leadership makes a U.S.-Ukrainian partnership more reliable and more valuable to the United States. On the evening of April 24, 2019, Ambassador Yovanovitch was hosting an event at the U.S. Embassy, honoring the memory of an anti-corruption fighter who had been killed when acid was thrown in her face the previous year. At about 10 that night, the embassy event was interrupted by a telephone call from Washington. Ambassador Yovanovitch described this conversation with the head of the State Department's Human Resources Department. She said that there was uh, great concern on the seventh floor of the State Department. That's where the leadership of the State Department sits. There was great concern. Uh, they were worried. Um, she just wanted to give me a heads up about this. Um, and, you know, things seemed to be going on. And so she just wanted to give me a heads up. Confused, the ambassador asked for more information from Washington. Three hours later, they spoke again. Ambassador Ivanovich learned that there were concerns about her, quote, up the street, that is, at the White House. The ambassador was told to get, to get on the first plane home. Why was this suspected career diplomat abruptly removed from her post? Why was she, in fact, urged by the State Department to catch the first plane home, that she was in danger, she shouldn't wait? At the time, the White House would not say. But today, we know the truth. The truth is that Ambassador Ivanovich was the victim of a smear campaign organized by Rudy Giuliani, amplified by President Trump's allies, and designed to give President Trump the pretext he needed to recall her without warning. Mr. Giuliani has admitted as much to the press. In order to understand Mr. Giuliani's smear campaign, against Ambassador Yovanovitch, we need to know about a few additional characters who Mr. Giuliani drew into his scheme. The first of these characters is Viktor Shokin, the disgraced former prosecutor general of Ukraine who was fired by the Ukrainian government for gross corruption. In 2016, at the urging of the U European Union, the International Monetary Fund, and the United States government, the Parliament of Ukraine voted to remove Mr. Shokin as Prosecutor General because he was corrupt and refused to prosecute corruption cases. At the urging of the United States, the European Union, the International Monetary Fund, all urged the Ukraine government to dismiss Mr. Shokin. The second character is Yuri Lutsenko, who succeeded Mr. Shokin as Prosecutor General. Mr. Lutsenko also proved reluctant to prosecute corruption cases, and several witnesses testified that he also had a reputation for dishonesty and corruption. Ambassador Yovanovitch and Deputy Assistant Secretary George Kent both testified that the U.S. Embassy in Kiev eventually stopped working with Mr. Lutsenko altogether. Shokin, Lutsenko, and Giuliani the goals of all three characters were aligned. Shokin had it out for Vice President Biden because of the role that the Vice President played in his 2016 firing. The Vice President, carrying out U.S. policy, urged a, a the republic if you can keep it to dismiss a fair trial. Shokin. Impartial I consideration note, of all of the evidence the president, the former vice president, against the president has been criticized is how we keep our republic. That concludes our introduction. That he be fired. The majority Senko found his career trajectory fading and wanted President Trump's support to boost his political prospects in Ukraine. Giuliani needed partners in Ukraine willing to announce two sham investigations meant to boost President Trump's own campaign. All three wanted Ambassador Yovanovitch out of the way. And so in early 2019, the smear campaign began. Ms. Lutsenko became the primary vector for false allegations against Ambassador Yovanovitch. Deputy Assistant Secretary George Kent testified that Lutsenko's allegations against Ambassador Yovanovitch were motivated by revenge.
Over the course of 2018 and 2019, I became increasingly aware of an effort by Rudy Giuliani and others, including his associates Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman, to run a campaign to smear Ambassador Yovanovitch and other officials at the U.S. Embassy in Kyiv. The chief agitators on the Ukrainian side of this effort were some of those same corrupt former prosecutors I had encountered, particularly Yuri Lutsenko and Viktor Shokin. They were now peddling false information in order to extract revenge against those who had exposed their misconduct, including U.S. diplomats, Ukrainian anti-corruption officials, and reform-minded civil society groups in Ukraine. As Mr. Kent indicated, the smear campaign against Ambassador Ivanovich was orchestrated by a core group of corrupt Ukrainian officials working at Mr. Giuliani's direction. This group included two additional characters who have been in the news of late, Lev Parnas and Igor Fruman. Mr. Parnas and Mr. Fruman were of course indicted last year on several charges, including charges related to large donations they made to support President Trump. Simply put, in doing her job well, Ambassador Yovanovitch drew Mr. Lutsenko's ire. And as Mr. Kent observed, you can't promote principled anti-corruption efforts without pissing off corrupt people. As it turned out, this statement applied to Yuri Lutsenko and to Rudy Giuliani, who feared that the ambassador would stand in the way of his corrupt efforts to coerce Ukraine into conducting investigations that would benefit the political interests of his client, President Trump. Giuliani's coordinated smear campaign against Ambassador Yovanovitch became public in the United States in late March 2019, with the publication of a series of opinion pieces in The Hill based on interviews with Lutsenko. On March 20th, 2019, in one piece in The Hill, Lutsenko falsely alleged that Ambassador Yovanovitch had given him a so-called do not prosecute list. <coughs> not only was the allegation false, but after having helped originate the claim, Lutsenko himself would later go on to retract it. The same piece also falsely stated that Ambassador Yovanovitch, Yovanovitch had, quote, made disparaging statements about President Trump, unquote. A statement issued by the State Department declared the allegations to be a total fabrication. President Trump promoted Solomon's article in a tweet, which intensified the public attacks against Ambassador Yovanovitch. Then on March 24th, Donald Trump Jr. called Ambassador Yovanovitch a joker on Twitter and called for her, called for her removal. You can see the slides of the two tweets. These unfounded smears by the president and his son reverberated in Ukraine. Deputy Assistant Secretary George Kent testified that starting in mid-March, Rudy Giuliani was almost unmissable in this, quote, campaign of slander, close quote. And according to Mr. Kent, Mr. Lutsenko's press spokeswoman retweeted Donald Trump Jr.'s tweet attacking the ambassador further undermining her standing in Ukraine. Her standing, the United States ambassador's standing. Mr. Giuliani was not content to stay behind the scenes either. He promoted the same attacks on the ambassador, on Twitter, Fox News, and elsewhere. At the end of March, the attacks intensified. Ambassador Yovanovitch sent Under Secretary of State for Political Affairs David Hale an email detailing her concerns and asking for a strong statement of support from the State Department. In reply, the State Department told her that they were unwilling to help her, their own ambassador, because if they issued a public statement supporting her, quote, it could be undermined, unquote, by the president. And they're concerned that, quote, the rug would be pulled out from underneath the State Department. The State Department cannot express support for an American ambassador threatened abroad because they are concerned that if they express support for that American ambassador, the rug will be pulled out from under them by the president. What it must have taken to convince our State Department to refuse support to its ambassador. 
Phone records show that Giuliani also kept the White House surprised of these developments, as you can see from these slides. Again, it is worth remembering that smearing Ambassador Ivanovich was a means to an end. Removing her would allow the president's allies the freedom to pressure Ukraine to announce their sham investigations. So we should talk for a few minutes about the investigations that Rudy Giuliani and his henchmen were promoting on behalf of the president. Let's focus first on the allegation that Ukraine, not Russia, interfered in our last presidential election. In February 2017, shortly after the intelligence community, the CIA, the FBI, all the intelligence agencies of the United States unanimously assessed that Russia interfered in the election to help Donald Trump. This alternative theory gained some attention when Russian President Putin promoted it at a press conference. Second, he said, I'm quoting from him, it's in the Russian on the slides, I think. Second, as we all know, during the presidential campaign in the United States, the Ukrainian government adopted a unilateral position in favor of one candidate. More than that, certain oligarchs, certainly with the approval of the political leadership, funded this candidate, or female candidate, to be more precise. That's President Putin talking, shifting the blame to Ukraine. Dr. Fiona Hill best explained how the Ukraine narrative is a fictional narrative being propagated by the Russian security services. Based on questions and statements I've heard, some of you on this committee appear to believe that Russia and its security services did not conduct a campaign against our country, and that perhaps, somehow, for some reason, Ukraine did. This is a fictional narrative that has been perpetrated and propagated by the Russian security services themselves. The unfortunate truth is that Russia was the foreign power that systematically attacked our democratic institutions in 2016. This is the public conclusion of our intelligence agencies confirmed in bipartisan congressional reports. It is beyond dispute, even if some of the underlying details must remain classified. The impact of the successful 2016 Russian campaign remains evident today. Our nation is being torn apart. Truth is questioned. Our highly professional and expert career foreign service is being undermined. U.S. support for Ukraine, which continues to face armed Russian aggression, has been politicized. The Russian government's goal is to weaken our country, to diminish America's global role, and to neutralize a perceived U.S. threat to Russian interests. President Trump knew this too. His former Homeland Security Advisor, Tom Bossert, said that the idea that Ukraine hacked the the DNC server was, quote, not only a conspiracy theory, it is completely debunked, close quote. And he and other U.S. officials spent hours with the president explaining why. The second false allegation that the president wanted the Ukrainians to announce was that Vice President Biden used his power to protect the company on whose board his son sat by forcing the removal of Viktor Shokin, the corrupt former prosecutor general. It is true that Vice President Biden helped remove Mr. Shokin, who was widely believed to be corrupt. And as I said a few minutes ago, it was official policy of the United States, the European community, and others in order to fight corruption in Ukraine to ask that Shokin and Lutsenko be removed. So the Vice President, Vice President Biden, in fulfilling U.S. policy, pressured Ukraine to remove Shokin, not to secure some personal benefit, but to advance the official policy of the United States and its allies. Even Ms. Lutsenko, who initially ceded the allegations against Mr. Biden in American media, later admitted that the allegations against the Vice President were false. And Rudy, and Rudy Giuliani told Kurt Volker, the special representative for Ukrainian negotiations, who had a prominent role in the scheme, that he also knew the attacks on Joe Biden 
were a lie. With Ambassador Yovanovitch out of the way, the first chapter of the Ukraine scheme was complete. Mr. Giuliani and his agents could now apply direct pressure to the Ukrainian government to spread these two falsehoods. And who benefited from this scheme? Who sent Mr. Giuliani to Ukraine in the first place? Of course, we could rephrase that question as the former Republican leader of the Senate, Howard Baker, asked it in 1973. What did the president know? And when did he know it?